morning beloved saints we are off to sunday school but i wanted to do a quick video reminding us why we live for god we we are always accused those of us that say we're saved by grace through faith it's all what jesus did it's trusting in what he did alone because to think anything you're doing is to spit on the cross as if he didn't achieve it it's just it's sick and also it would give us a place to boast it says, uh, by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, is not of yourselves, is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so if it had anything to do with us, we could boast. I'm saved because I do this, or I don't do that, etc., etc. So I was just going to go over something in Romans 12 real quick before we leave. All right, uh, Paul is talking to the Roman church, and he says, I beseech you, meaning like, I'm begging you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. So we know they're already saved. They're brethren. Uh, these are not just Jewish believers. These are both Jew and Gentile believers in the Roman church. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Why is that our reasonable service? Well, it tells us. Because we're not debtors to anything but Christ. Because we owe him. Look what he's done for us. Because we are saved after what he endured for us. It's our reasonable service to live for him. And if we don't, it gives people a place to blaspheme the name of God. It says to the name of God isn't blasphemed. So the church isn't spoken of ill. And also to shut the mouths of those outside the church. So they have nothing to accuse us of. It's also to be a light to the world. There's many reasons why we live for God. But the main one is that because he saved us. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that means to remind yourselves who Jesus says you are in him. As he is, so are we in this world. He is righteous, just, holy, merciful, loving. And therefore, as he is, so are we in this world. Our new man is in perfect standing. We have God's imputed righteousness. We should renew our minds daily to remind ourselves who we are so that we can manifest that in our fallen flesh right? Put this body under subjection. Uh, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There's another reason why we live for God. So that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So that's another reason, okay? So he says, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. That means clear minded. OK, it doesn't mean just without alcohol. You can be without a sober mind if you're in a lot of pain because you can't think clearly. Anything that clouds your judgment uh, can mean that you're not of sober mind. Uh, if you're really angry, it means you're not of sober mind. You have to be of clear mind. That's what that means. To think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. There it is. There's the proof that God gives every person a measure of faith. Every one of us. And someone keeps writing me, so you're going to take credit for believing? Yeah, I don't take credit for anything. God gives every person a measure of faith. And he says some people don't believe the gospel because Satan has blinded them. There's something there. You know, I, I've been through so much, and I was brought to the end of myself. And I believe. And I believe that God gives repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. But I also believe that we can choose not to believe it. I do. Uh, if that was the case, if, if we automatically, like the Calvinists believe, he forces us to believe. Then why does he say, whosoever will come and drink of the water of life freely? You see, whosoever will. Or he says, I would have done this, but you would not. So I believe we do have some uh, uh, responsibility in our faith. I do. Uh, I am not a Calvinist or an Arminian. I'm not either one of those things. 
Uh, I'm going to do something on predestination a little bit later. It's not as the Calvinists say. It's clearly written out in Scripture what it means, uh, and I will do that. But in any case, uh, I don't think we can understand fully God's foreknowledge. It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. I believe he knows the end from the beginning. So, uh, in any case, we should live for God. There's two reasons. Because it's our reasonable service. Because Jesus saved us. And also so that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So as we go into Sunday, which is called the Lord's Day in Scripture, the reason we worship on Sunday is not the mark of the beast. It's because it's the day Jesus rose from the dead. So we honor that day. We're not Israel, which uh, um, honors the Sabbath. Plus, we're not under the law anyway. We, we never have been. And we're not part of the nation of Israel who who honors that. If you want to honor the Sabbath, that's great. Um, but the Sabbath was a shadow of the rest we have in Jesus. Uh, it tells us that in Scripture, uh, that it was that day, uh, that it was a foreshadow of the rest we have in Christ. Um, but the Lord's Day is Sunday because that's the day he rose again from the dead. There's nothing wrong with worshiping God on Sunday. It's just... Ellen G. White, that nut job, uh, Seventh Day Adventist, came up with that. So, anyway, she didn't even come up with it. She stole it from another guy. Uh, in any case, let's just have every day be a day that we serve and honor God, uh, not to be saved, but because he did save us. All right, see you guys tonight on uh, the Church of the Eternally Secure at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sin City Preacher. God bless.